Let's not waste any more time. Let's get out of here. Don Juan reassured me he would go as slow as possible. He instructed me not to utter a sound, no matter what happened. He gave me the general direction we were going to go and began running at a slower pace. I followed him, but no matter how slow he moved, I could not keep up, and soon he disappeared in the darkness ahead of me. After I was alone, I became aware I adopted a fairly fast walk without realizing it, and that came as a shock to me. I tried to maintain that pace for a long while, and then I heard Don Juan's owl cry a little bit to my right. He whistled four times in succession. After a very short while, I again heard his owl cry, this time to my far right. I began to move in a new direction, expecting that the other three cries in the set would give me a better orientation. I heard a new whistle, which placed Don Juan almost in the direction where we had started. I stopped and listened. I heard a very sharp noise a short distance away. I strained to listen and detected a series of soft noises, as if two rocks were being struck gently. There was another owl's cry, and then I knew what Don Juan had meant. There was something truly melodious about it. It was definitely longer and even more mellow than a real owl's. I felt a strange sensation of fright. My stomach contracted, as if something were pulling me down from the middle part of my body. I turned around and started to semi-jog in the opposite direction. I heard a faint owl cry in the distance. There was a rapid succession of three more cries. They were Don Juan's. I ran in their direction. I felt he must have been a good quarter of a mile away, and if he kept that pace, I would soon be alone in those hills. I noticed then there seemed to be something moving with me to my left. I could almost see it in the extreme periphery of my visual field. I was about to panic, but a sobering thought crossed my mind. I could not possibly see anything in the dark. I wanted to stare in that direction, but I was afraid to lose my momentum. Another owl cry jolted me out of my deliberations. It came from my left. I did not follow it because it was without a doubt the most sweet and melodious cry I had ever heard. It did not frighten me though. There was something very appealing or perhaps haunting or even sad about it. Then a very swift dark mass crossed from left to right ahead of me. The suddenness of its movements made me look ahead. I lost my balance and crashed noisily against some shrubs. I fell down on my side and then I heard the melodious cry a few steps to my left. I stood up, but before I could start moving forward again, there was another cry, more demanding and compelling than the first. It was as if something there wanted me to stop and listen. The sound of the owl cry was so prolonged and gentle, it eased my fears. I would have actually stopped had I not heard at that precise moment Don Juan's four raspy cries. They seemed to be nearer. I jumped and took off in that direction. At that moment, some gruesome thing came to my attention. There was actually something like an animal to my left, almost touching me. I jumped involuntarily and veered to my right. The fright almost suffocated me. I was so intensely gripped by fear that there were no thoughts in my mind as I moved in the darkness as fast as I could. My fear seemed to be a bodily sensation that had nothing to do with my thoughts. I heard another owl's cry and I thought that Don Juan was waiting for me because we were out of the field of danger. I was almost at the edge of the darker area when a fifth cry froze me on the spot. I strained to see ahead into the dark area, but a sudden rustling sound to my left made me turn around in time to notice a black object, blacker than the surroundings, rolling or sliding by my side. I gasped and jumped away. I heard a clicking sound, as if someone were smacking his lips. Then a very large dark mass lurched out of the darker area. It was square like a door, perhaps 8 to 10 feet high. The suddenness of its appearance made me scream. For a moment my fright was all out of proportion, but a second later I found myself awesomely calm, staring at the black shape. I barely heard Don Juan's owl cries. They seemed to be very close by and seemed to be frantic. They were longer and raspier, as though he were whistling while he ran towards me. Suddenly I seemed to regain control of myself and was able to turn around and for a moment I ran just as Don Juan had been wanting me to. Don Juan! I shouted when I found him. He put his hand on my mouth and signaled me to follow him. We both jogged at a very comfortable pace until we came to the sandstone ledge where we had been before. We sat in silence until dawn. 
Then we ate food from the gourds. Don Juan said that we had to remain on the ledge until midday, and that we were not going to sleep at all, but were going to talk as if nothing was out of the ordinary. Later on, I asked Don Juan, What happened to me last night? You stumbled on some entities which are in the world, and which act on people. You know nothing about them, because you have never encountered them. Perhaps it would be more proper to call them entities of the mountains. They don't really belong to the night. I call them entities of the night because one can perceive them in the darkness with greater ease. They are here, around us at all times. In the daylight, however, it is more difficult to perceive them, simply because the world is familiar to us, and that which is familiar takes precedence. In the darkness, on the other hand, everything is equally strange, and very few things take precedence, so we are more susceptible to those entities at night. But are they real, Don Juan? Of course. They are so real, they can kill people, especially those who stray into the wilderness and have no personal power. If you knew they were so dangerous, why did you leave me alone there? There is only one way to learn, and that way is to get down to business. To only talk about power is useless. If you want to know what power is, and if you want to store it, you must tackle everything yourself. But how can I store personal power? You are doing it by living the way I have recommended. Little by little, you are plugging all your points of drainage. You don't have to be deliberate about it, because power always finds a way. I asked him to explain how he arrived at the conclusion that it was dangerous for me to stay by myself in the darkness. The entities of the night moved along your left. They were trying to merge with your death, especially the door you saw. It was an opening, you know and it would have pulled you until you had been forced to cross it, and that would have been your end. I mentioned I thought it was very strange that things always happened when he was around. The times I had been alone in the wilderness at night had always been perfectly normal and uneventful. I had never experienced shadows or strange noises. In fact, I had never been frightened by anything. Don Juan chuckled softly and said that everything was proof he had enough personal power to call a myriad of things to his aid. It makes no sense to you simply because you still don't have enough personal power. Yet, you have more than when you started. So things have begun to happen to you.